Hi, this is Chicho again. Now, for those of you who've been following the math videos, you remember in 2013, I got together with a couple of friends um, and we produced a series on the mathematics of farming. Um, we filed it under a food and farming and put it into the math and real life section of the site. Um, and basically the idea was basic, uh, to sort of go over uh, some of the mathematics that you, you know, we need to learn to be able to farm, to be able to grow food. And um, what we decided to do after we produced that series, um, all three of us really liked it, uh, we decided to sort of continue uh, following uh, Marv and Vanessa's project, uh, what they're doing with the CSA, and uh, to do updates and um, to look at more data uh, as they acquire it. Basically, they're growing this business from scratch. So uh, to look at some of the mathematics behind that. Now, in 2014, I didn't get a chance to cross paths with Marv and Vanessa. They were really short on time and I was uh, running around getting really busy and uh, their stay in Vancouver was very short for 2014. So we just, we just didn't end up crossing paths. Uh, so unfortunately, we didn't produce any videos for one season. Uh, but this year, Mark did make it back to Vancouver and he stayed a longer period and I was, I had a little bit more time and uh, what we ended up doing, I ended up getting together with Marv and uh, we decided to go for a walk and, uh, you know, talk to him, get a little, uh, get a lowdown of where they are and what they've done uh, since 2013 and what their future projections are and uh, take a look at some of the logistics of, um, you know, farming and what they've encountered, the pluses and, and the pitfalls and the negative aspects, some of the problems they've encountered, okay. So uh, what I've done right now is um, edited the video that I made with Marv, me and Marv made uh, when, we, when we went for our walk. And um, I'm loading that video on as a raw. And what we're gonna do for 2015, as Marv uh, sends me more data, more information, and I, you know, I do my due diligence and research and uh, you know, f find out what it is exactly that he's talking about and uh, what's involved in farming. Um, what we're going to do is uh, take some of that data and take, uh, you know, chunks, uh, snippets out of this raw interview and put them together and do basically what we did for 2013, make little short videos, little segments and really specifically go into um, certain topics, just little snippets. And in the end, um, hopefully, I'm not sure how long this is going to take us, uh, where me, Marv and Vanessa are happy with what we've produced, you know, we'll try to put together a package and a booklet and uh, basically have a little mini course, introductory course um, for the mathematics of farming and, you know, some of the things that you have to think about. Uh, so right now, uh, what you're going to see is just a raw interview of me and Marv just talking and, uh, you know, him getting me caught up with what they're doing and where they are. And for 2015, what's going to happen is, uh, you know, hopefully uh, he'll send me some data and uh, some pictures and some videos he's shot of the farm. And we'll put that stuff together and produce, you know, set number two for... Uh, um, mathematics of farming for uh, the math videos we're creating for food and farming okay uh, so this is the raw video you're about to see and um, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video okay bye for now uh, so last time we left you guys uh, you guys had four uh, sections and they were 60 by 70 feet right and they were yep. they were all separate and you had um, I forget how many uh, clients you had at the time would have been about 30, I think, or yeah, 26 to, or... Yeah, yeah I think 25 26. to 30 clients, and yeah. they were paying you guys uh, 25 bucks a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and every week they were getting... Um, a variety, a variety, variety of, of... Yeah, like eight, up to eight items, or eight minimum of eight items of vegetables, and um, it would change during the season. So, okay, okay. so you're eating always in season. Okay. And you guys were running... Uh, your season was 16 weeks? Yeah. So we stuck with that. Well, you stuck with 16 weeks. Yeah. Okay. And you basically start your work off in the winter when you're taking uh, in the in the greenhouse, and you built a greenhouse. And there's there's a fantastic video of them building the greenhouse. And the, what you told me this year, you uh, you have a bigger greenhouse going on right now. Yeah, we got a like a real one that isn't all built out of you know salvaged material, which is which is fine and good. But now now this one's a little more professional. So it's it's steel, uh, steel ribs and okay. it's 48 by 20 feet, which is plenty of space. So we have four rows in there and we, we had it full of tomatoes and 
And those, um, are, th those are the places where you're growing the seedlings to a certain height and then planting them, yeah? Yeah. Um, in, in this case, we were still growing in the old one because we hadn't put the new one up. Okay. So we were transporting the seedlings out to the field, but in the ground, we were growing tomatoes in the ground out, out in the field where the greenhouse, where the new one is now. Okay, so this, so. this new greenhouse is substantially larger than what you guys mm -hmm. had before. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned one thing, you got, uh, you got subsidized. Which uh, is an awesome deal. Yeah, well, there's a there's a, a plan that New Brunswick has that's um, to help beginning farmers sort of. Uh, it's called a season extension grant, okay. and uh, the idea is to promote longer seasons, more sustainable sort of. Um, so so there isn't as much import, you know. So yeah. so producers can have a longer season. So it covers everything from root cellars to um, greenhouses that you can get stuff in the ground earlier okay, or, so or have storage crops later in the season. So whatever extends your season, you can give them a proposal yeah. and they'll subsidize some of that. And that's being mainly because Canada, we're, we're in Canada by the way, and uh, Canada gets uh, certain parts of Canada, huge parts of Canada. We have a summer, we have a winter, and there's maybe two week transition of spring and fall and the seasons are short. Mm -hmm. uh, you're really dependent on the weather. Yeah, for example, we had frost in May, uh, May 28th was our last frost, and September 15th or September 18th was our first last frost. first frost. Wow! So okay. that's that's usually there's a safe time. Like every every zone, every growing zone has a sort of a, a average frost date, uh -huh. and you plan around that because there's certain things that just can't take seedlings can't take frost, for example. Yeah. As soon as frost hits, your your plans are done. Yeah. Well, of. there's some things that that can like there's a lot of like kale, for example, does really well in the oh, frost. Oh yeah, yeah. And it grows here in the winter as well. Yeah, yeah. In, in Vancouver, we're in Vancouver right now, so the season here is much longer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so it's a zone. It's it's called a hardiness zone, and it's um, out there we're zone four, I believe, and it goes zero is like a tundra, you know, basically, yeah. and uh, and tropical would be I think a zone nine or something. Nine or ten, maybe. Nine or I'm ten. not sure. Okay, so it goes from zero to ten the scale. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good and enough. And here I think we're seven or seven or eight, maybe. I don't oh, know. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So anything anything that uh, extended your season, the government uh, subsidized it. And you guys got basically your area increased huge compared mm -hmm. to what you had. Yeah. So this year you're going to start working in the, in the new greenhouse. Yep. And you needed that because you've, uh, from the, what Mark showed me, they've really extended the area that they're growing now. You're, you were four lots, four sections, 60 by 50 feet. Mm -hmm. And what you've done, you've connected those sections and you've started some other sections, yeah? Correct, yeah. Uh, so uh, should we draw this out for them just yeah. to do a layout? And then what we're going to do is Mars going to show us, uh, you know, they're doing crop rotation and stuff. So we'll talk a little bit about this. Just get a uh, quick little lowdown of, uh, of what's going on with them. Um, and what we're going to do, we've got sticks. So we got sticks. So Mars is going to just basically lay it out for us and let us know uh, uh, what, the, what the work area is. So, yeah, the original squares would have been, there would have been more like that. So what they've done here, let me show you this, this thing. I'm not sure if you'll see it, but I'll, I'll post it up on the thing. So what they've done is uh, uh, the squares that they had, there were four squares here and they've joined them, joined them together and made a rectangle. Okay, so let's assume, let's take this as the rectangle, this whole thing. That would have been all tilled up. So this was a hay field originally. In 2011, we came and it was all hay. Okay. And we essentially started with one of those squares in 2011. So layout is like this, and then you have one section here. So there's another section here. Yep. And then you got two big sections here now. Yep. So this one, this one would technically have been over there, but for the purpose of framing things, we'll... We'll put it here. Yeah, and, and when you add these up, I sort of calculated roughly, that's why I did these squares here, yeah. just for a scale. Um, so it does come out to just over an acre. Um, I think an acre would be, uh, yeah, like an acre of cultivated land, so... An acre of, you got acre of crops that you're uh, planting, yeah. cultivated. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. 
because last time when we talked, you had uh, uh, 0.4 acres. Yeah, quite I think a bit it was, less. Uh, the number was 0.4 acres. Uh, all four sections together was total 0.4 acres. Now you're up to a full acre of crops that you're planting. Mm -hmm. And how come you how come you expanded? Why did you grow? Um, the idea was uh, basically we're chasing higher ground. It's it's a flat field. Like when you look at it, it looks flat, but what we've seen from these like big weather events that sort of are coming at higher frequencies uh, is that uh, there are lower areas that tend to flood a lot more and flooding um, we, we do have other ways to deal with it like we can do raised beds which kind of elevate the the soil how and, far are you raising them uh well we're doing it by hand so sometimes if we have Just extra help inches. yeah yeah it's you we have the tractor the tractor treads are five feet apart yeah and so we we take it down to like just under four feet so it means shoveling it up you know like you have the tractor beds and we want to we want to make it down to like we'll, we'll shovel it up from here and kind of oh, like okay 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 yeah yeah, yeah. you know push so it are in you building are you building a, 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 a sort of a a dike uh, or is there's no the material it's it's yeah it's all soil like it's we're, all soil. we're not so putting wood in anything okay, but okay. but the idea is that if it does flood it'll stay in the, in the low areas. areas and protect the oh, okay, okay yeah so your rows are now raised uh, some are, of them are, are, are some of them yeah. are, are narrower and raised yeah oh, okay and the idea with that also is um, if you can keep that you you don't have to till every year because too much tilling first of all it takes more fossil fuel second of all it's uh, not good for the there's like I think it's mycorrhizal structures, okay. so, like micro stuff that that I don't really that mesh out that you're breaking apart. Yeah, that you're breaking and you're and what they do, they all help in you know the sort of the the, the ecosystem the of the of the of the soil and so it's kind of a permaculture technique that people use. They raise their beds and they you don't really touch it. You you weed it and you you know you use hand tools, but you're not like you're not. So you don't you, you don't till it, it at all. Uh, ideally, low-till is, is more sustainable, let's say. Like oh, it's, really? Okay, it okay. gives healthier soil and it maintains the nutrients and it maintains all the sort of the unseen stuff that, that's going on in the soil that, you know, it's all yeah. good for the crops. So, But it's a lot more labor-intensive, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's a lot more labor-intensive. Yeah, it's not. On a, on a large scale, like, you would need... A, there are things that you can get a bed shaper, for example, for a, a tractor, or you can get a... A lot of small farms would have a walk-behind tiller, which is, they make really good, efficient walk-behind tillers that, that will raise your beds and make narrower beds. Okay. Um, okay. So that's, that's an option that we're looking at as well. Okay. And uh, I guess the reason that, one of the reasons that you went from basically this and a little bit here, this, you extended this one as well, I think, yeah? Yeah, yeah, we had, this is where our new greenhouse is. Oh, that's where you put the new greenhouse, yeah. okay. We got a... It's supposed to be a movable greenhouse, so it's on runners. Oh, we, okay. We built okay. wooden runners. And the idea was to, also as a season extension thing, to um, be able to plant late crops here, slide the greenhouse over to here, and have them mature in the fall. Oh. And then in the spring, start something here, um, and move it back here and have whatever's growing. So, you know, you're essentially doubling your area that's um, under cover because under cover, it's a lot more controlled. Like okay, you can yeah. control the light and the, well, not so much the light, but the, the conditions are a little more, um, yeah, say yeah. growing tomatoes. Like you can't, you can grow them outdoors out there, but it's, you're looking at blight. And for example, if we had that tropical storm with outdoor tomatoes, it would have been catastrophe just you know? destroys them. Yeah, yeah just destroys them. okay so we yeah you you want to a lot of people grow strictly undercover because it's just for that reason you you take out like there's so many random factors that you kind of eliminate so okay, okay. yeah and uh, la the whatever two, uh, 2013 uh, you had 25 26 clients or so mm -hmm. how many clients did you guys have this year or last last season which would be in 
2014. Like, we had uh, 40 clients, and some of those were half shares, but 40 like 40 total clients, in, clients buying from you guys. Yeah, plus so you, plus a farmers market. So it was. Oh yeah, you did the farmers market every every week. Uh, yeah, every for week. about 12 weeks or 10 weeks. Yeah, 10 weeks you did farmers market, which mm -hmm. was the same schedule as you had before. Uh, so basically, you, you expanded your market about 80% or so, 40, 26 to 40, whatever that percentage comes out to. Yeah. Uh, so that was a lot more money you were getting at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you guys end up doing with that money? Were you, like, you bought materials for the farm and you, you obviously uh, pitched in to get a bigger uh, greenhouse. Yeah, so the government covered, the New Brunswick government covered half of that cost. Okay, sweet, sweet. So um, how, it, much, how much was the total? Uh, I that. think it was about 2500 2500 that we paid, or I'll have to check my numbers on that, okay, but okay, uh, get back around there, that. I okay. think, like, uh, they can, for, for that size, you, you know, um, it, it's got roll-up sides, and it's, we didn't get, like, the super fancy package with end walls and stuff, uh -huh. so we had to build our own end walls and do a lot of little things, little okay. modifications, so, yeah, I think it was 2500 That you paid? So yeah, it was about $5,000 yeah. greenhouse. Um, or did we, or was it 2500 total, total and we paid half? Okay, get, get back to the anyway, cost yeah, on it. Yeah. Okay. But it's well worth it because it's extending. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So you're able, okay, fantastic. So are you guys thinking about doing more greenhouses? Getting more greenhouses or? Um, there's uh, an option of doing, a, it's called a caterpillar, tu caterpillar tunnel, which is, um, it's steel conduit tubing, like round one inch or something and it's curved it's not quite as big as it's not 20 feet wide okay um but you can go long you can go up to 300 feet long oh i think i've seen them around here where but it's 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 arched it's, it's arched yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, ours yeah. is like a gothic it's it it stays up the plastic stays on all year okay so it sheds the snow yeah, yeah. um the the ones that are just a simple curve it's um the snow stays on there so you have to take the plastic down oh. every year so it's a little more labor intensive okay, but okay. but it's lighter and it's less material and it's it's same same idea like growing undercover you can do you know all your your hot crops like your sweet peppers hot peppers eggplants and tomatoes you start off there and you do, okay yeah and then so is this so one one hectare you said you one hectare or one acre acre one acre so one acre you're working with and that's sufficient to uh supply 40 clients for the CSA oh yeah and then some and then some yeah. and the farmers market of course yeah and yeah. the farmers market was going well oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. selling out of stuff oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's we, we kind of have the luxury that we're most of the most of the season there we're the only vegetable producer oh so wow in the farmers market yeah which is it's not a farmers market it's a it's a, it's city a market. market yeah it's lots market. of lots of crafts and jewelry and um, people go there there's a breakfast and so and it's a really old crowd like it's it's average age would be probably 60 like late 50s 60. Late 50s. Um, so not not the same kind of food consciousness that you would see in larger cities where people are like oh well, local food you know it's it's still kind of people are like why are you charging this much for carrots when i can go to the store and okay, yeah. a lot of education a lot yeah. of like you know this is what this means this is how these are our practices we don't use chemicals and this kind of thing so so but word of mouth is getting out obviously if you're getting yeah. more clients coming in you're selling out of stuff mm -hmm. okay okay and yeah. then what's that what's the population density that you're uh, that's coming that you're supplying to like uh, are you near a big city like how many people in the area accessible to you uh, like do you know um, like are we talking hundred thousand people five hundred thousand people in your area no not even close <laughs> not even close no if you look at um, a map of New Brunswick which I can send you a yeah little graphic um we're on the northeast there's like a it's called the acadian peninsula okay and the largest city would be probably where we, city i mean it's a town it's called trackity that's where we go to market okay and i think it's about five thousand people that's it yeah and and the town close to where we grow which is 30 minutes to the south yeah it's called negwak and it's 1200 people 12 so you, you're getting 40 clients uh, from about 2,000 people that m have access to you? Uh, they're from both, they're from other communities, but we have like sort of depots where, so they pick up at the farm okay. on Thursday, or the other half picks up at the market on a Saturday. Okay. So um, 
between those two and and there's plenty more demand like because there's not a lot of uh ac competition let's yeah, say yeah, yeah. there's not really the people that that do want local organic food um there's no nowhere to get it unless you drive say to Moncton which oh, is wow. 2 hours south okay. so um yeah so we we could definitely expand if we had like say the you know if we if we would hire employees for sure I, so it's just you and Vanessa basically doing this right now um, and Vanessa just, uh, she got a full-time job mid-season, so that was another, this was a kind of a weird season, because okay. uh, it, it kind of fell on me, and then we did, we did sign up with a, uh, an organization called HelpX, which is kind of um, like woofing, if you know, w willing workers yeah, yeah, on yeah, organic yeah. On websites you can go online and uh, decide to join a farm, Yeah, and you basically um, people come there and apprentice with you guys. Or, or even less less formal than that, like just they drop by for a week and help you. But we have a profile that writes up exactly what you can expect, kind of like, okay. you know, you'll be staying at a guest guest house that a small guest shack that I built that is like no running water and you got to, you know, crap in the woods. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's shower, like we have access to a shower. Okay, okay. But people kind of go for a more of... But do, do you pay them or no, 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 they're just there to learn? We feed them. You, you feed them? Okay, three meals a day. Board. So, yeah, oh, yeah. Rough room and, and board and they do a little bit of work and learn about farming and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Quite a bit of work. Like, I mean, and and a lot of it is, is not that hard. Like, and it just goes faster when you have more people, you oh, know. Oh, yeah, like weeding or whatever it is. Weeding especially. Uh, weeding or, especially. Or monotonous things that, yeah. you know, even planting out sometimes takes just a lot down. longer. Just yeah. Okay. So, uh, so how was the how was the growing going? What were you guys doing in each each one of these sections? Um, how were you treating this? So every year we would f we uh, prepare the soil like we we till it and we feed it with compost. Uh, we also started using crab meal, which is uh, I don't know if maybe Oof. last year we were doing that as well. It's a byproduct of the of the f there's a large fishing industry oh, the out fishing. there. Yeah, you, you mentioned that uh, when we did the, the, the interview, the talk before, you mentioned you were getting a little bit uh, from the fish, mm -hmm. uh, the factory, and you were getting a little bit of uh, uh, from the peat moss or something like this. Yeah, as well. Yeah, as yeah. well. Okay. Uh, the crab meal is good because the, we have a local supplier that's, um, they ship it to Japan, uh, I think, for, I don't think it's for agriculture pur purposes, but... Um, but nobody in Canada really uses it out there, even though it's a really good, like organic approved input for your soil that oh, really? has a good, good sort of so you're chemical a great makeup. Deal for this. Yeah, it's it's, uh, I think ten bucks for a large, but like a twenty-five kilo bag. Oh so, my god! And you mix um, that with the peat moss and the soil, and sometimes we actually sometimes that we just we scatter it on and it's like a powder it's not it's compost is quite heavy to you need you know a lot of shoveling or we have a tractor bucket but we'd rather you know with the with the crab meal you can kind of just sprinkle it on or so is it dry or is it wet it's dry it's, it's dry like, like fish food kind oh, of like fish yeah. food. Oh, okay. really stinky but oh, really but whatever the plants like it right? yeah yeah okay okay um so we yeah so that's how we prepare it and then each i mean each crop requires a slightly different um approach to like develop the conditions you know for example corn we grew corn and it requires a lot of feeding like a lot of nitrogen and um that's another reason to do the raised beds because nitrogen is if if you know anything about industrial agriculture that's the big problem that's depleting a lot of the soil in the midwest or all over north america so is that what they're using potash for the um not sh yeah um that's for probably for potassium potassium oh, okay, but okay. uh a lot of chemical fertilizers are nitrate like sense. yeah so they're they're petrochemically derived nitrogen or or they you know it, it's it's just obviously it's not working like yeah it's, yeah it's, t yeah, it's, it's definitely not working. beats the hell out of the soil and it and it usually leaches into the waterways and there's a lot of reasons not to use that so that's okay. basically the thing behind organic farming one of one of the the big reasons for organic practices is to build up the life in the soil rather than kill it spray it with everything and then add you know because manufacturing it's, it's not stuff. holding the it's not holding the content yeah, yeah i know from yeah. the geophysics i did there's a lot of water contamination near a huge agro business mm -hmm. like because there's a lot of leaching okay yeah. okay uh, so what's going on with uh, with the with the cross what are you guys doing are you guys doing rotations uh, what's um, so yeah, we um, a lot of uh, we we decided to do large squares here. Okay. Um, we figured 
we'll do it this year and even if some of it rests a year it's it can be okay if if we uh um we'll eventually use it kind of thing or or we'll uh you know it makes sense to rotate your crops because uh certain for example insects can stay in the soil uh over winter and and they pick a certain crop for like um, cucumber beetles or or potato beetles the colorado potato beetle is a large problem that okay. most organic growers even even conventional growers have um, but uh, when you rotate crops so we we grew quite a bit here uh, we had about 20 rows here and uh, you don't necessarily want to plant the same thing in the same place every year because like the I said the bugs okay. um, also because certain nutrient balances um, there are certain types of plants that grow uh, better after you know some plants are what's called nitrogen fixers which oh, they yeah, okay. um, dandelions I think are nitrogen fixers uh, yeah a lot yeah, of yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of things that are considered weeds are, are, are actually fixers. quite good okay, yeah okay. Um, and so in addition to the rotation, we, we started doing some cover crop. For example, this whole area, which we grew in the year before, or in 2012 and, and 2013, we covered with oats. We just, we took, uh, we got a bag of oats, like seed oats, and uh, spread it with a hopper or with like a lawn seeder. Okay. And what a cover crop does is it, it uh, uh, acts as like, how would so? I explain it? Like it's what's called like a green manure. So it, oh, okay. it takes the nutrients and it puts it into the plant. You let the plant stay there. So we don't use the oats. Uh, we don't you have don't to harvest. Um, it's it's you need machinery for that. Like oh, okay. you can do it by hand. But uh, yeah, yeah. on a on a large scale, it's it's like you have to crack each individual oh, kernel. Yeah. Okay. It's just, okay. yeah. We like oats. We eat oats, but it's not that much. And uh, okay. but it's really good for the soil because you leave the the nutrients are in the plants you let them die and they fall back in and essentially instead of composting you that's what it is yeah okay. and also it suppresses other weeds because you pick crops that grow fast for example clover or buckwheat or alfalfa they grow fast and they they they're a competition for the weeds so okay um you're keeping the good plants growing uh and the weeds kind of don't have as much of a chance so they grow slower than the oats and stuff. So oats and whatever it is, it grows faster than the weeds. Okay, yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so for these things, for for example, you planted cucumbers here. Mm -hmm. So next season you're gonna plant cucumbers somewhere else. Yeah. And the bugs don't find their way there. Most of them die off. Uh, ideally they wouldn't, but they do. They of course they, they do. Bugs but always a smaller find percentage. a way. Like you're not dealing with 100 percent of the of the bugs that have slept. Yeah, that's right. That, that are hibernating there. Right? Yeah. Um, so the smart ones make their way to the new crop. But uh, it depends also on a lot of things like timing. When did you plant it? And, and if you, it, uh, with the rotations, you really have to, it's a long term. It's maybe a five, five year rotation you do, you know? So eventually your potatoes, potatoes are a really important one to rotate, for example. Um, uh, they may end up in five years in the same area, mm -hmm. but this is something that we're, you know, it's not super high on our priority list, but uh, it's something that you have to plan ahead well in advance. So if you have something tilled um, and you sort of maintain it just by maybe giving it a, a till in the fall and a cover crop, okay. um, it's, it's a lot easier to use it in say three or four years um, because it's already been worked yeah, yeah. rather so, than, yeah. So you're not growing uh, crops uh, that you're selling on all this land, there's um, areas where you're doing cover crop, or you're you're working to prepare it for the next season. Yeah, but it's it's mixed in within each square. It's not like we we're not so organized that that we'll designate this to rest. Um, it's it's more like we'll have, you know, Few we'll rows. notice that these work really well. Then we'll leave a gap here, and then we'll we'll plant say beans okay, and yeah, something, yeah. and then but then we just keep keep a sort of a record a loose record of yeah uh we can't grow in there and so or or it got flooded you know or yeah. it's like it's unusable for this year and then 
we'll we'll add to it next year. We'll okay. we'll put more compost or whatever needs to be done. You, uh, do do you plan on uh, extending the area you're growing this season, or you're going to work stick with this and see how that goes? Yeah, Especially oh, it's plenty. with the greenhouse since you got the greenhouse. Yeah, it's plenty. It's it's this we don't need more. Yeah, you don't need more. Yeah, okay, okay. Unless, like I said, if, if we because with the volunteer help, we can get a little little more done. Okay, but um. It's unless you have like a full-time employee, you really can't. Um, so what are you gonna you do? You can't if, work that much. What are you gonna do if uh, you get a lot of people wanting to buy into the CSA? How are you gonna supply them? Uh, well, we're we're limiting. You're we're limiting probably it. Cap it, capping it at forty or so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna cap it because you mm -hmm. still have to go to the farmers market. The farmers yeah. market is generating a fair bit of income for you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that one's it has to be in the play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It has to be in your. Uh, economics yeah uh, to make sure you're, you're getting enough funds for next season stuff like this okay. yeah I mean we've built up our clientele and they they expect you know they expect, they expect you us to be there, to be there. And, <laughs> they want we, their vegetables <laughs> yeah and it's nice you know it's it's nice to interact on, on that level okay, um, okay another thing we did at the farm pickup on Thursdays is um, because Vanessa got this job mid-season we sort of switched that one to a uh, market style CSA so they prepaid we had the they paid a lump sum but we gave them a little more choice to alleviate kind of the stresses of for us of having enough for the market for the other CSA customers um, but it it was just a trial run to see okay like if we give them this much choice you know who will buy what you know and so you do a sort of market test to see yeah. what people want yeah Oh, okay, okay. Um, and it's it's been interesting. Some people they they just that were customers the year before that they they for example didn't buy something that we were giving them already for a year, you know, mm. or for a season, and it made us think like, yeah, what were what were they doing with it? They they don't they eat don't it, eat you it. know. Oh. So now it's kind of I don't know, you know, a lot of it is people are used to a certain shopping experience yeah. and this is new for a lot of people so so do you give people so, a list that like do you have a grocery list of people checking off like a like a restaurant like a menu uh, they like, get there yeah there's a list of what we have this week and uh, it's not in advance like, it's not in advance no oh, we'll, okay, we'll tell okay. them okay next week we'll probably have this because we look at the field and we know what we have and, okay but we'll say we might not have enough of this so if you really like beans they're they're a really hot seller there like okay. yellow beans are a People love them. It's part of a traditional oh, dish. Nice. And I like yellow beans. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're delicious. <laughs> um, but they're all, uh, we're always like, okay, get here early because, you know. They sell out. They'll sell out. So oh, And there's okay. certain limits. Like, we want everyone to have, like, yeah. carrots and peas and stuff and things that, that we grow pretty well, I think. And uh, we want everyone to have still a variety. But this this is kind of like a, it's less formal. It's not like... You know, here's your here's your share with everything in it. You have to take all of it. Okay, it's okay, kind of okay. like flexibility. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, a little more flexibility. Okay, so. okay. So, how did your finances work this year? You guys, or last season, it was it was good enough to cover your expenses, and for you guys to expand, obviously. Mm -hmm. And you made some adjustments uh, to what you're going to do this season coming up. Uh, yeah, I, uh, it's finances. Yeah, it, it covers it. I mean, we're we're in a sort of a unique situation where. We're not paying rent for the land. We okay, have yeah. free use of the land. We have a tractor at our disposal that we really just have to gas up, yeah. which is, and it's not, I mean, it's it's fairly efficient. Like it's not, it's nothing close to what what a bigger farm would have. Like, yeah. so we- It's just old school, like tractor that- Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually, it's not a bad, it's, it's, uh, a, good it's tractor, a fairly yeah, big yeah. John Deere. Vanessa's dad is a uh, mechanic and he loves- Fixing things. Machines, uh, okay, <laughs> he loves okay, big okay, machines. Good, 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 good. It's too big for us, but- I'm not complaining, you know, yeah, like it's, yeah. I learned to drive it and um, as, as much as I don't like the smell of it, um, the alternative of digging each row by hand would be like a cow. impossible. I mean, uh, yeah, we like could have workhorses. But workhorses, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hard. You got to feed them. You got to feed them. You got to take care of them in the winter and stuff like that. It isn't, uh, there is a guy that was offering us a horse actually. Oh, wow. Because uh, we have, this is all hay. So he oh. said, yeah, you got to field the hay, you know, just fence it in and. Have we you said guys thought about doing that, fencing off an area and letting people graze, bring um, their animals to graze and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Is there demand for that? Um, there would be demand for yeah, maybe a cow or a pig. That's that's the that's thing. the total area it would take. Uh, I'm not sure. I, yeah, I don't know much about livestock and livestock. stuff, okay, but okay. but there isn't that much. Um, uh, 
how should I say it, like a tradition of, of raising animals around there. It's, it's okay. lumber and fishing, basically. Oh, okay. That's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, we, do, we do know a, a cattle farmer that, that he, uh, he grows all his own grain and he does, he's, he's old school and, and he, yeah, he's good. Um, but, um, well, that's nice. Yeah. Foghorn. Foghorn, yeah. It's foggy here in Vancouver right now. Uh, so it's, you can see the sun sort of disappearing and getting uh, darker. It's and it's nice. chilly. It's winter. It's January right now in Vancouver. But it's for January, rest of Canada is frozen. Vancouver, we're sitting at around, I don't know what it is, 8 degrees probably or something. Yeah. 8 or 6 degrees. And, uh, yeah. uh, fantastic weather. We've had, yeah, I mean, we've had, I think it was minus... Wow, it's been like minus 20, 30, but um, even in November we had like, you know, You're cold, well cold weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the winters where you guys are is like freezing. It's mm -hmm. super cool. Okay, okay. Um, is there anything else that, uh, uh, I mean, you're going to send me a lot of info. Uh, so Marv, Marv has agreed to send me uh, some info and hopefully I'll get a chance to put some videos together and go through to some of the mathematics of what they're doing. And, you know, we'll take a, take a look at this and... Uh, maybe the car for farm layout the sections and figure out uh, you know what they've been growing and how they've been rotating and what their yield has been and uh, some of the economics of it right uh, is it is it feasible to do something like this on a personal level um, I mean you guys love it uh, you're growing amazing food that's keeping you fairly healthy because you're getting a lot of nutrients oh, I mean, yeah. that's one of the things about economics is not just how much money you're getting back from what you're producing but is that work keeping you healthy so you don't have extra cost to, you know, maintain your health? Yeah. Right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's all outdoor work. It's some of it's a little bit, you know, hard on the knees and the back, but yeah. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't trade it for a, an office job an where office I have job. to get a, a gym membership to stay in shape. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's the thing in, uh, in the cities and in Canada anyway, because it, that the winters are pretty harsh here. Uh, or they could be pretty harsh here. The outdoor work activities uh, reduce a lot for a lot of people. So uh, people end up, if, if you're active, when you're coming out of the winters, uh, you have to sort of take it easy, slowly mm -hmm. get into more active uh, physical stuff because uh, you end up having a lot of injuries uh, come spring. Like, yeah. uh, I know this from personal experience as well. You're, you're all gung-ho when the sun's shining a little bit warmer to go out there and do your thing. And you know, you, you might hurt yourself, so you have to, there's a transition out and transition in, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of hibernation. We're like bears here in Canada. Uh, we do hibernations in the winter, and eat a lot and grow a little fat and wear it off in the, in the spring and stuff yeah. like this. So, uh, and hopefully we're eating good food, right? Because yeah. we need the nutrients and stuff, not the minerals from the soil. Mm -hmm. But with this as well, I mean, it's seasonal work and winter is definitely a, like we go until November when we're really like, we, there's a lot of maintenance work at the end of the season to prepare the soil, like for example, to mulch or, or uh, certain things like garlic over winters, you have to mulch it and okay. um, other things that you have to um, consider um, so that, you know, it's kind of like hibernates well and then that it's ready to work in the spring if, depending on what kind of spring it is, you know, it might be a late spring and, and you don't have time to do the prep work so mm -hmm. um, but again yeah it's it's seasonal work so you do have to find kind of ways to you know maintain uh, some kind of activity yeah or, so, or yeah yeah so in the winter you're here because right now the amount of work you have to do on the farm is minimal yeah I yeah. mean I can afford to take off take off take yeah. off and do other thing or you get another job doing your downtime uh, optimally, if you need yeah. the funds if yeah. you need the funds Right. Myself, I mean, I, I, I use winter as a because because I do a lot of art and yeah. it's sort of my time when when during the summer I really can't even get in the creative headspace and, yeah. um, or or it's a different kind of headspace yeah. which it's also creative but not in the not cerebral in the media, way yeah not in media yeah because yeah. more of uh, uh, as some of you know I've used a lot of Marv's music for my math videos uh, and he he shoots video edits video and he's produced some uh, fantastic stuff and. Uh, you have some of that stuff that you're going to send yeah. again this time around and we'll cut the, you know I'll, we'll show you some of the work that Marv's doing um, with with the media producing because uh, that's a great creative outlet and when you're stuck inside in the winters in Canada uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing to have a computer to, to create to uh, uh, to produce work right yeah absolutely okay, okay fantastic 
Uh, anything else you don't want to share? This is a, this sort of gives a pretty good lowdown of what's going on, where you guys are. Yeah. Um, and this year you're going to maintain this level, mm -hmm. uh, what you guys have. Uh, supply your 40 clients for the CSA. Uh, hit the farmers market. Uh, do crop rotations and see. And one thing I was going to ask you: How did you guys? Uh, how, how have you guys figured out how to do the rotation? Are you guys reading up on this? Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's not just trial and experiment. That there is that as well. Mm -hmm. But you're reading up a lot of research to see what works with what. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the thing to keep on top of is because of our diversity. Uh, we're growing about 40 varieties of 40 vegetables. Varieties. Okay. So um, to keep them kind of um, blocked together, like you don't want to mix too much, you know, you don't want to alternate like uh, too many things. In one, just, in one batch. There's nothing wrong that season with doing that. It's just uh, later on, if you do want to implement a crop rotation, oh. you want to have like, say, your carrots and your, like there's groupings like brassicas for example these are this is a i think it's a family i'm not sure of the taxonomical okay. thing but it's it's like your cabbage uh, kale broccoli bok choy things like that uh, it's good to have them together so that then you can kind of move that block and be like this year we're growing that whole block somewhere else so okay. whatever it because is ten, whatever, ten whatever beds bugs or, whatever pests were feed on that you know, you leave them there and move on. Yeah, ah, okay. pests and, and, those, and nutrients as and well. And nutrients, yeah. those take the nutrients. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so just, uh, you mentioned that uh, there were some problems, uh, some some failures, some uh, pitfalls that you guys had. Uh, so what were they? What, what were some of the problems you encountered? Uh, um, it probably would have been a lot of, a lot of it stemmed from that uh, big rain event. Uh, okay. It was post-tropical storm Arthur. <laughs> it, yeah. yeah, it was a hurricane and then it was downgraded uh, but that hit us in June and uh, so as a result I think or we think that uh, a lot yeah a lot of the nutrients of the plants that we had just kind of fed uh, with compost um, were probably just leached out just sort of yeah drained Washed out away. Oh, yeah okay. and uh, and we had a lot of like really weak looking uh, for example we couldn't even sell cabbage like i think we sold three heads of cabbage this year that were like you know this big, this yeah there's softballs you know oh my god and uh broccoli uh basically if if you have weak seedlings uh, they they seem to be more susceptible to insect damage um also there was a lot of weeding issues we didn't get on top of weeding um if you let the weeds go too much or if you don't thin out for example carrots or beets. Um, anyway, I, I itemized all our crops, all our varieties, and I put kind of, you know, this one thrived, this one needs improvement, and this one totally failed. So um, there was quite a, quite a bit of absolute failure. Like there would be beds, whole beds. Like for example, we had um, up here, I think we had like two or three beds of the brassicas, I was saying, the cabbage. Uh, cabbage and broccoli we had a few back here that just got destroyed by by pests and um, wow. and it becomes kind of that's when you really you question everything you know are we growing too fast are we um, is our timing off or you know so mid-season we had a kind of a hard time of that's also why we implemented that um, market style CSA because we didn't want uh, we, we actually couldn't provide uh, exactly what we promised so mm, okay. so it was a way of kind of giving a bit less but more diversity because we could we could still salvage some of it but um, uh, also in the end we we cut it down to 14 weeks so we actually some people still we had a few things but it kind of the structure fell apart at the end so um, yeah we told people well in advance it, it's probably going to be 14 weeks and then we had to it was a bit painful to pay them back their money, but you know, a little that's bit. the deal, you know. Okay. So, but were your clients happy? Everyone was happy. Everyone I mean, was happy, yeah. and they were coming back next year. Yeah. So basically, yeah. Uh, you promised sixteen, you delivered fourteen, and you took that ratio and reimbursed people whatever the less the two weeks, whatever that percentage comes out to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And everyone was super happy because you want to go from one season to the next with a clean slate. You don't want have. You don't want to carry debt. You no. Don't want, no. No. You you want to go clean slate. Yeah, we don't want to have like, because our record keeping is honestly not, not great. So 
Sometimes we, you know, we, we write things in pencil and we write it on scraps of paper. We're getting better, but... Okay, um, okay. Well, you hopefully know. this will, uh, this is, this, this is yeah. doing, you know, we'll, we'll start doing, keep a nice record. Yeah, we'll yeah. Pre present it anyway. We'll put it, you know, put it all together that way you have all the information. And, I mean, and it helps just even to talk about it, just summarize the year. Because yeah. sometimes, I mean, this year we were so, we were almost, we were just like, okay, we're done. You know, we were really done at the end of the season. We don't, we didn't really want to deal with it anymore deal with it yeah, yeah you just don't yeah. want to stress about it so but yeah. now it's we're getting back into planning phase you know like, like thinking about adjustments to mm -hmm. to avoid some of the pitfalls again yeah definitely something you want to be aware of when you're ordering seeds like you have to order seeds for the next year yeah. you use some of what you have left but um planning the crops like you know the other video where it was yeah. all about crop planning and you can avoid a lot of right like a lot of problems by proper planning proper so. planning yeah okay, okay cool, cool, yeah cool that's fantastic so there's a lot of research in this and hopefully uh you know we're we're, we're, sh we're trying to share as much as we can yeah uh, whatever more and Vanessa have learned and uh, I, and i'm still learning too like i mean yeah. vanessa studied it for for years and 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 we're still yeah reading up on it because it, it's a, it's really a lifetime of knowledge you know a lot yeah. of second generation farmers probably take it for granted that you're supposed to plant this at this time and it's kind of ingrained in the yeah. tradition but when you jump into something as big as farming it's there's just so much knowledge that that is uh th there's good resources but it's 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 a lot to wrap your head around yeah, yeah. yeah. ideally education system should be set up where oh, sort absolutely. of apprenticeship there should be some kind of apprenticeship in farms where you go there every year if you really want to get into growing food where you get an idea of what's required to do something mm -hmm. because there's an easy way to do something and a hard way to do something and the wrong way to do something, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I would think even just something as simple as, you know, f for kids to, to see the um, the progress of, you know, from seed to uh, germination to, you know, caring for a plant and just that the amount of, uh, it doesn't take a lot of vigilance. It, it does its own thing, but you, as long as you're there to see it and know the stages of it you automatically understand it you don't really you know that you get an understanding that's beyond uh okay food is in the supermarket yeah, or like yeah. or i don't like vegetables it's like you you have to like vegetables after that you have to be like this you is amazing you know yeah. it came it took power from the sun and like you know there's a lot of beautiful things that that you learn along the way that are just amazing you know as much as you can try to manage it it's it's it does grow on its own you know and yeah. a lot of weeds come up and nature will you know sort itself up basically yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so okay. that that's great to okay. to just see that year after year and yeah. and kind of try and optimize things but you can't really push too hard you can't really force things you know otherwise then you start growing under laboratory conditions yeah, right yeah. and then that's not yeah. farming we're, we're not we're not at war with nature we should be working exactly in yeah. harmony with nature right? yeah okay yeah. Good. so okay thanks a lot mark well, yeah thank much you appreciate it yeah yeah well uh We'll, we'll come back to them and do updates uh, whenever they come to Vancouver. We'll touch base with them and see what they're doing. Sure. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, again, I guess uh, I'll see you guys in the next video and hopefully go over some of the stuff, uh, uh, some of the numbers, some of the logistics of it. Uh, and we'll try to, you know, keep it coherent. And hopefully towards the end, uh, I don't know how long it's going to take us to get a full package together. We'll, you know, try to create a workbook and, uh, you know, math in real life, right? Mathematics of farming. See you guys in the next video. Bye for now.